We are live at BB World 14 in Las Vegas. Uh, I am Nick Provenzano, also known as the uh, Nerdy Teacher, and I am uh, partnered with, as always, my uh, life soulmate in the teaching world. Yeah. Tim hey, Gwynn. I'm Tim Gwynn. Um, I think this might be the first time we have done a chat like this in person in the same in the same state, even, I think. Oh, no, we did one. We did one with Steven Anderson oh, uh, in San Diego. That's and right. Isti, that went really well. People, Just, uh, people I'd like to attend that one and listen to Steven and his red hair talk about amazingness. Yeah. Say hi, Steven. Steven's here. We're talking about as if he's not here. He's actually here. Oh, cameo, cameo. Oh, yes. Oh, there we go. Cameo. He actually brightens up our, our, our screen when he gets into it. Look at that. That's pretty nice. Uh, you can see behind us, we've got the Blackboard World Wall of Awesome, of all the great uh, social media that's been shared over the event so far, and it's its first day, and that's actually the topic of our discussion for today, is social media in uh, K-12 education, and we're really excited to kind of kick off this conversation. Uh, we want to encourage people to uh, participate through uh, Twitter. You can uh, send us uh, comments, questions, ideas using uh, the hashtag NerdyBBWorld14. Uh, feel free to uh, shoot us uh, a tweet, a comment, a thought, an idea as we kind of discuss about uh, the ideas of social media in the world, whether it belongs, whether it not, how, how, that, how that works out uh, in the grand scheme of things. Uh, and this, of course, will be uh, stored on YouTube to be watched later at your leisure. Uh, and we can kind of go from there. So uh, I guess we'll kick it off by me coming to you, Tim, to throw you a question that I have not created yet until just the second. Are you so thinking of it right now? I'm thinking of it so right you're now. You're dragging out what you're saying. Because I drag so it you out. Can create this question. So it'll Let's be a go. very good question, though, I assure you. So the first question I have to you in regards to social media and K 12 education um, who's in your number one spot in your MySpace top five? My, is it a MySpace top five or is it a MySpace top eight? Oh, I just care about your top five. as a top five and then they moved it up to the top eight. It might have been the eight. Um, yeah, Steve it's you, though. I mean, you're, you're you're number one. I don't know why we're even having a discussion. <laughs> but, uh, That's what I wanted to know. But no, but seriously, yeah. uh, question uh, is, I guess we'll go broad and then we can narrow uh, it down as we move on. What role do you think, if any, does social media have for K-12 education uh, in, in the big picture? I think social media can play a number of roles in K-12 education. Um, I think it can be used, we use it mostly at the elementary level where I'm at. We use it a lot for communication and sharing information out with families, stakeholders, and the community. So um, my school specifically has a Twitter account, we have a Facebook page, um, and we use that a lot to interact. Um, a lot of our classrooms now are actually having their own Facebook pages as well. And so the parents really like that because the teachers are really good about just posting updates about what's going on throughout the day. Um, I have some teachers that will collect data on their Facebook page. So they might do, especially the lower grades, they're doing like a little graphing unit or something of that sort. They might ask the parents what their favorite animal is or something like that so they can collect real data, which is kind of neat to get the parents involved and engaged with what's going on in their classrooms. And it really opens up that transparency piece, which I think is pretty great as well. Um, and then I think as you kind of move up, you begin to see um, student application. So I, I don't, can't do a whole lot without our students are under the age of 14, and so we are restricted by terms of service on those websites. But as they get older and get into high school, um, you have that whole realm open up as well. You can begin to interact with them and bring um, that whole level to it. So why don't you, I guess you could talk a little bit to that thing at the high school level. Uh, yeah, I just want everyone to know that I'm not being rude and ignoring Tim. I mean, I am, but I'm also I just really active on Twitter <laughs> as we uh, get these tweets in and uh, we share out those uh, ideas there. Uh, I think Tim makes a lot of great points. That's interesting about the data part of Facebook. I, I never would have thought of using Facebook in, in, in that fashion in, in the way to reach out to uh, uh, family and, and kids. And I'm sorry, no scrubs by TLC. You just started playing in the background <laughs> and it's incredibly distracting. <laughs> Because if you don't know, Nick and I might have sang that at karaoke at Educon one year. But anyway. We absolutely did. <laughs> I'm sorry. We're like, really serious conversation, and then <laughs> no Lisa, left eye, Lopez, uh, on it. Yeah. Good stuff. Anyway, you were saying. I was saying about how interesting it is that Facebook 
I'm back on track. I got it. That Facebook, uh, you have to share data because we know yes. data is super important. And really how I live my life is through data or data, uh, not the Android which, from Next Generation. Which one do you say, data or data? I like to say data. I say data unless we're talking Goonies. Oh, then see, I will Goonies say data. is good, but I tend to lean more towards Star Trek Next Generation. Prince, uh, I believe his name was Spinner. Maybe Spiner. I was his not name. a Star Trek. I was not a Trekkie. No. So maybe, maybe I'll go back and watch my Netflix. But you should. You should go for it. I mean, I gave Doctor Who a chance, and that turned out to be yes. a fantastic idea. So maybe but we'll go there next. looking at social media in K-12... Uh, at the high school level, for me, it has been uh, a wonderful uh, adventure in connecting and communication with uh, my students and uh, community. The kids like having access to... <laughs> I'm watching one of the Blackboard staps sing along to this crowd as I'm trying to talk, and it was amazing, because she was dead on. She was dead on. I'm trying not to laugh and shake the table so I don't look like we're in the earthquake. Uh, hey, sing it. You own it. Don't be embarrassed. If, we're not. We'll start singing it. If you don't know, the Blackboard K-12 staff is kind of the greatest people. Uh, I would agree time. with that statement. They are probably the most fun group of people we've had a chance to work with. And uh, they know the words to no scrubs, which is a huge <laughs> plus. Huge plus. You should that, if that's not on your resume, <laughs> it should have that on their ASAP. Be. Uh, but no, as we look at, uh, for me, my kids want to connect. It's so funny because, you, you know, when you go through the ed program of college and stuff like that, you know, you're almost browbeaten into stay away from the kids, don't interact with them outside of the classroom, you know. You're the teacher, the student, stay away. And, you know, you are scared into believing that's the only way you can connect with kids. And what you find out is that is the worst advice that you could ever be given. That kids want to connect. Some kids need to connect because they don't have any other connection uh, at home, frankly, uh, to latch on to. So for me, using social media started off kind of like how many people will engage in social media. It started with me being there and just spitting out information. Hey, this is what the homework is. This is what the homework is every single day. Now, I still do that, but I also do it now to connect to... Uh, kids and certain things, or I find something that I know a kid is interested in, and if I happen to know what their Twitter account is, I'll shoot them to them. Go, hey, mm -hmm. this is really neat. You should look into this. And it's a it's a really nice place when you look at social media um, to have. I, I used to do a Facebook page, but high school kids are are bailing Over on uh, Facebook in just droves. They're all about the gram now. Uh, Instagram, Insta. yeah. Uh, well, I tell you. Like, I, I don't see myself using Instagram in my classroom as an English teacher, and I'm sure there's probably a ton of ways I could use it. Uh, I, can, I have to limit the different tools that I'm using in my classroom. I just I use more than enough, uh, probably as it is. Uh, but my kids, you know, I use Instagram you know, personally, and, you know, I have some kids that follow it, which is, I think, is funny and silly, you know, that that's something that they uh, want to connect to. Uh, Stephen Anderson is doing a head shake thing here. Uh, behind the scenes. This is what real life on live, on air is like. It's fun. It's probably best that um, we're never together when we do these. That might be. That might be. <laughs> um, but I like what you're saying about you spitting out information and then it kind of take on, took on a new role. Mm -hmm. And I see that a lot running um, the school accounts for my school as well. It used to be a, I'm just going to disseminate information and put out the occasional negative fire here and there. Um, but I actually have learned so much by, um, Stephen actually talked about this in his, uh, he did a session earlier today um, on the K-12 stream about um, social media and schools. And he talked a lot about Wake County's Twitter account. And if you have not checked that out, that is one of the most hilarious Twitter accounts you can kind of just go through and read. Um, and uh, Peel, Peel Schools out of Canada is also another excellent model. And they... Um, I've had some great conversation with them about how, like, they just embrace the sass. Like, they're all about being sassy on Twitter, and so um, they just have so much fun. And so part of that is you really engage your audience, and they've figured out that formula by being fun and entertaining, getting your information out there. Um, it really does. It engages not only the community, which tends to be where it goes, but their students are kind of flocking to those accounts and commenting and talking as well. And we had a snow day a few... I don't know, many months ago, summer right now, um, and they were all about, like, tweet us your snow day selfies, and so 
high school kids are getting into it. And so it's a great way to just kind of captivate that audience. And that interaction piece, I think, is so crucial. That's why I think so many have moved to social media, especially when you talk about interaction with corporations and those types of things, is they want that interaction. I can't tell you how many parents will connect with us via our social media accounts instead of picking up the phone like they used to or sending in a note. They will send me a message over Facebook or send me a tweet. And it's just quick. It's what people are used to now. Um, and so we need to take advantage of those, that, that shift. Well, I, I think it's, it's interesting. You, you mentioned uh, that, that shift. I really think almost the school website is almost, if not already, dead in no terms agree. to parent interaction. Uh, you know, when I look at the different levels of putting together a website and, you know, my parents have to go to the right class and then within that right class go to the right hour and then within the right hour figure out if they're looking at homework, are they looking at, you know, school rules, my rules, things like that. There are multiple steps and frankly, they're generally not looking at that information on a computer. They're on their phone and, you know, mobile web page viewing is as tough as it is, especially if it's going to use a site. Um, that is generally not mobile friendly, and a lot of school websites are not mobile friendly. You know, they're flash based, or uh, it's just they don't look pretty. There isn't usually a mobile option. Some have it, but some don't. And so, for me, I know my parents and my students, they love that ability to access uh, information through Twitter quickly, through email quickly, through all of those options because the, the website isn't as powerful as it used to be because of mobile technology. I think not just that it's not as easy to access mobile for the you know the people that are seeking after the content. The people that are putting the content on the web pages don't like it either. I know personally it is a pain sometimes to just do something simple like put a picture up on the school web page. It's a lot of steps. It's a lot of work. I have to go sign in. I have to email the picture to myself. Whereas with our school Facebook page, I can go take a picture with my phone and post that all within about 10 seconds and instantly have... And I can also, you know, I get analytics too. I can see exactly who's interacting and what's going on. And so I tend to do a lot more through our school Facebook and Twitter page than I actually do on our website because just the ease of use and that seems to be where people are, where they're going. Uh, Kyle Calderwood has jumped in and Kyle hails from the great state of New Jersey. And uh, he said uh, one of the reasons why teachers should be involved in social media is showing what your edu awesome students are doing as well as connecting to the global to other global educators i definitely want to address that uh, one of the best things that i've ever done is connect my class to other students around the world um, it has created an audience for them that motivates them to be even better uh, than they can it's funny it's weird it shouldn't happen this way but kids love to have an audience outside of the teacher and I encourage all teachers to embrace that idea uh, because it's super important to do that also our kids are doing amazing things let's share what they are doing with the world um, I uh, organized TEDx Gross Point South HS because I wanted my kids to share their stories with the world and they did it and we used Twitter, we use uh, blogs, and I tweeted out their blogs. I used the hashtag comments for kids, that's for the number, uh, comments for kids, to connect with other teachers. So I think putting information out that the kids are doing, showing them that the internet can be used for more than just um, panda videos, as uh, Kylie pointed out to us this morning, watching uh, panda videos, uh, which is good, but there's more to it. There's uh, a ton more to it. So uh, I think uh, Kyle makes an, uh, an awesome uh, point. You can follow him on Twitter at, at K-C-A-L-D-E-R-W if you want to connect with him. Um, I think the other important thing about sharing what your kids are doing is we see so many negative things about education in the media. Um, that constant talk of when you ask any stranger on the street, how's public education in America doing? And they always tend to respond negatively. You ask them, how's their kid's school doing? Oh, my kid's school's doing great. So this public discourse of the negativity, we need to take that back. We need to take ownership back. And social media is such a great way to do that. And like um, Kyle said, there's so many awesome things happening in our schools. We have to tell those stories. We have to share what's going on. We need people to see the things that are going on. It's, it's, it's crazy how many families we've had come to our school and it's oh we saw this video that your fifth graders posted on YouTube or we saw this and this is why we decided to come to the school those are the kinds of things that um, that attract people and 
we just have such an opportunity. I mean, I think we have a responsibility to share what's going on in our schools, and we need to show everyone we are doing a great job. We are doing great things, and um, that transparent. You know, we want to invite you along on that on that uh, journey with us, so you can see what's going on. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> Charles Schallhorn, I will guess that. Sorry, Charles, if I got that wrong. Uh, when asked about social media, it says to learn, to share, to connect, to get outside of classrooms, to be part of a global community. And, and I think, again, that's a, another it's excellent point that uh, Charles is making there, is that we can no longer teach in such a way. Uh, look at this big guy behind me on the screen there. Look how big he is. I know, he right. keeps peering over my shoulder. Um, I'm going to find him. We're right no longer get teaching a in the tiny community. Uh, whether we teach in an urban setting, whether we teach actually in a rural community, it's still that not that community. We need to prepare our kids for the global community. We need to trust that our kids uh, will understand with our guidance, hopefully, um, to look at the world and say, this is what I'm going to be a part of. I'm not just going to grow up in a small town in North Carolina. Uh, I'm not just going to grow up in a suburb of Detroit. I'm going to expand my horizons. And as teachers, we need to do that because you know, kids are not going to do that necessarily on their own. And we now have available to us some of the absolute best tools in the world to connect our students to anyone that we want. And uh, some of the best stories I love hearing is how uh, librarians, who are just some of my favorite people, I never, I just, I can't help it. I, I love my teacher librarians. For all of you teacher librarians out there, I'm just a fan. Uh, if I could go back, I might actually try to get my teacher librarian certificate. I, I, I think it's just cool. I think what they do is amazing, and I love hearing stories. This is from them, other English teachers and teachers in general that bring in authors, they bring in scientists to say, hey, this is what we're studying. What do you think? Or we read your book. You know, we have questions for you. How awesome is that to be able to grab an author, to grab a scientist who can just Skype in or do a Google Hangout and be part of the conversation? Like That was just unheard of five years ago. It's just not happening. Sorry, can't do it. Now, they have 20 minutes. They have 30 minutes to give you, even if they are in New York and you're in Los Angeles or they're in England and you're... They, they'll make the time... Um, if you can reach out for them, I think those tools are what really makes social media great. Is that you can tweet anyone, and you know you might get that response, mm -hmm. and it's so much easier than the days I remember in elementary school. You had to write the letter to someone famous, and you hope that you got a response. <laughs> like, you know, you're writing all these letters to different people, and now that assignment could be done in 30 seconds. Take out your phone, jump on Twitter, find the celebrity if they're on Twitter, and send them a tweet and see if they respond. Yeah, I mean, and even just seeking out professionals in all sorts of areas. Um, your kids did 20 times this year. That's such a great way for them to be able to roam in and out of the shot. Um, such a great way to connect with professionals in different fields. Um, yeah, like you said, sometimes you get these amazing opportunities where you can Skype and have individuals come in. But at the very least, a lot of the time you can get responses from people. Um, kids can get questions answered. Um, it's, so, it's, it's so great to see a student it's so incredibly involved when somebody outside of the classroom responds back to them or reaches out to them. Um, we've done... Uh, I, yeah, I don't know where I'm going with that. Let's stop for a second. Okay. Uh, so I'll change the pace uh, then to other comments here. We've the got... Kyle pace? Oh. <laughs> see what oh, I did there? Oh, that was good. I see what you see did, what there. did there. No, I don't want to talk about him. <laughs> <laughs> He's dead to me. We love you, Kyle. No, we don't. I have not received a hug in I don't know how long, and... You know what else I haven't received in a long time? Kyle's mom's cookies. Exactly. Thank they you. were not at ISTE this year. They were not. That's another reason why I'm not a super big fan at the moment. And here we are at another conference. Still, no, no cookies. Kyle's mom's cookies. Uh, and wasn't he just here like last week? He, he, he could have left, left them at the front desk. He could have left them at the He could have left them with the concierge, and we would have been like, we're here for the cookies. And he's like, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> I, and I had one, we like, and you know, they were amazing. We like, you know, a little wink, and... <laughs> wink, wink, tug on the ear, you know. So, uh, yeah. What I want to talk about, besides the pace man, is um, a comment from TLH Instruction, uh, who responded about social media and, and K-12 education. It says, the easiest self-directed professional development and, and she said and in bold caps, a great way to network with people across the country. So I want to talk about the self-directed professional development. Um, 
you know, when I look at professional development before I got involved on uh, social media, uh, Twitter particular, but it definitely carries over Facebook and, and Google+. Plus. Professional development was whatever my school was deciding to bore me with that day. That's what professional development was. Like, that's all I understood about professional development. That's all I was uh, understanding what professional development was. And I was like, this is awful. And there was one we had to find out, like, what color you were. Do you remember that? Like, there was, like, a thing. Oh, I just did that a few weeks ago. Like, it's, like, your personality <laughs> color. Yeah, it's your I'm not going to lie, I enjoyed it. But I also did it in a very small group with my administrative team. Okay. So it was good. I could see us doing it as an entire school. <laughs> yes. Yeah, not so much. <laughs> but, so much. Yeah. Uh, we did that. I mean, but that was like what many, many years are. ago. Um, but now I can direct my professional development. You know, for example, my big thing right now, my big project for this year is learning spaces. Mm -hmm. Like I decided after ISTE, I want to explore learning spaces. This is what I want to focus on. And what did I do immediately? Went to social media and said, okay, learning spaces, what can I find? And then boom, 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 tons of tweets. I uh, did some reading, did a blog post immediately and said, this is what I'm thinking. That came out and boom, tons of comments, tons of posts, tons of readers. And then I went to my school, took some shots, did some annotations, did another post, boom, tons more comments, ton more uh, you know, shares and comments on Twitter. And all of a sudden, I'm by no means an expert on learning spaces now, but I am really well informed on learning spaces, and I did that all in a matter of a week on my own time. There I am, right now. And so I'm going to redesign my classroom based on information from what I would say are the experts around the country telling me about learning spaces and the things that they've done. So I don't need to reinvent the wheel. I just need to jump online and ask a question. And boom, there it was. There was all my information. And I did a very similar thing a few months ago. Same deal. My administration came to me and said, we need to redesign what our fifth grade classrooms look like. Um, they thought they were just going to throw a bunch of technology in the room. And I said, you know, we need to do more than just that. Like, we need to look at the learning space, change all that stuff. Same thing. Went to Twitter, threw some information out there. People are sending me their Pinterest boards. I don't even do Pinterest. But their Pinterest boards covered with all these great ideas. People are sharing the things they've done. They're sharing their blog posts. And you're right. I didn't have to. I mean, I could have sat there and searched for information. But when you have this network of people on social media, the information's already vetted. You already know it's good, hopefully, most of the time, if you have a good, solid network. But people are sharing the things you've done. And the great thing is they share the things that they did not do well, which mm -hmm. is, saves you so much time in the process. It's great when people share their failures and also share their successes because we can learn from both of those. But... You're right. Everybody, the ideas are out there. People are trying things out. Just take those pieces and adapt them to your own classroom and move forward from there. It's been an interesting evolution in professional development with social media and the ups and downs of Twitter chats and how people interact on Twitter uh, in starting conversations and taking those conversations um, from social media into blogs, into face-to-face -face conversations mm -hmm. or phone calls and things like that. Um, that that's what I really like to tell people in social media in K-12 is that it should be the beginning of a conversation. Um, you know, you might only connect with some people through social media, and that's fine. That's what relationship is. But you can definitely grow beyond that and uh, create uh, longer professional relationships or just personal relationships. I mean, you and I, uh, we met on the Internet and it's been amazing ever since. It has. We have an internet relationship. I have no problem saying that. We, we, met, we, on met, on, we met on the webs, the yeah, interwebs. The webs. We didn't need Tinder or whatever. I don't really I don't know, know what, what Tinder is. is. I don't know. <laughs> I heard it's a thing. I just want to sing Kesha Timber when he wants to Tinder. <laughs> I heard it's a thing. I heard her. it's a thing. I don't, a I don't thing. know, I don't know. We're, we, we both are in very happy relationships. We're, we're good. And we have this relationship, so we're double good. We're double um, good. But, <laughs> uh, but no, what, what it... What it double, 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 it's like double mint gum. Double the pleasure, is that... <laughs> double the fun? Double the fun. That sums us up pretty well. All the commercials are like the twins in him. Yeah. Yes. The, the best part is that when you can really embarrass that Steven Anderson and he turns red... It's yeah, really red. It's good. It's, <laughs> it's legit. It's really red. But no, like relationships. Like, you know, for me, this is all about relationships. Professional development, um, you know, is about learning. And you learn from people that you respect. You learn from people that you trust. You learn from people that you want to uh, connect with further. So I respect Steven Anderson. I might be the only one, but dang it, I do. And I do too. You do. So okay, there's two. two of us. And when you speak, we listen. You know, you bring important information to the table. When Kyle gives us cookies, we listen because we like his cookies. And we, we will listen very to anyone well to positive that will reinforcement. Us. We do. 
Uh, so when you when you look at professional development, um, it is about connections. That guy's um, back. Um, oh, David. We Jakes, had David Jakes has responded to us. nice. Uh, we had a conversation also um, a few weeks ago when we were at SD, and we were talking a lot about how. We learned so much going to conferences, but we're kind of the point now where we have sort of learned the things we want to try out, the things we want to do. You're, you know, you're taking on learning spaces this year. I am doing all sorts of curriculum and learning space stuff with my fifth grade class. But when you have these well-established networks, you know where to go. And like you said, it starts on Twitter. It might be a tweet, somebody gives some information. But then it's very simple, like, hey, can I follow up, get some more information from you? might turn into a Google Hangout or a Skype conversation or a phone call or they send you information. Um, but it's the, it's so much easier to find the information when it has, you know, a human behind it. You can find things on the internet. You can find websites. You can find reports. You can find all sorts of data. But when you have people that have actually done the work and put those things into place, those are the people you trust. Those are the people you want to take the information from. People want to see what's working, what isn't working. You can tell us all day long why it works, all day long why it doesn't work. Is it working for you? Is it not working for you? Why or why not? Um, we're busy. We're busy people. we got a lot to do in the classroom. So we can help each other out with those relationships and speed things up a lot more. Hey, David Jake said something about uh, the school website. And uh, he says the school website isn't going away. It will just evolve. And uh, I'll agree with that. But I, I like... The I like to use the word evolve because I think that's exactly what we're talking about with social media in K-12. Uh, what it is is that it is helping fresh development evolve um, into something much, much better. Um, mm -hmm. Again, instead of being district-driven, school-driven uh, learning, it is becoming now learner-centered. And, you know, what I want to learn, I'm going to go explore myself. And it's something that... It's funny because schools are telling teachers that's how they want to develop the classroom is to make it student driven. You know, yes. what do the kids want to learn, you know, and reach them with what they're passionate about and all of those are important things and yet then we're told sit and take this instruction, this is what we need to do. Now, there's some value in that in the sense that a school or district has a goal and they want to inform their staff and this is what we're gonna do. Like I'm not talking about those type of initiatives. I mean those are important, the district needs to get everyone on board. Uh, but sometimes it's when I have to sit through technology professional development, which is rare because I'm generally running it, but there are occasions when I have to sit and I'm like, I don't need this. I yeah. know this. And if I'm not going to help you know, teach it, then I would much rather go in the lab and go Google like I said, learning spaces and figure all about that. Or I said, I really want to understand how to utilize data, data. In, or data in looking at, I don't know, essay writing, you know, whatever, whatever interests me because the current setup isn't working for me. So I, I think when uh, Mr. Jakes there talk, says the word evolve, I think that's something important. I think teachers are too often afraid of change, but evolving is so important. Mm -hmm. We need to be Or you become extinct. It's true. Like, yeah, to, like to, that to metaphor carry right there. All the way through, you do. The and dinosaurs. Teachers, Teachers that refuse to change, refuse to evolve, refuse to evolve, I'm sorry, rightfully deserve to be extinct. You know, if you are refusing to change, you're not helping the kids. You're not helping yourself, and you're definitely not helping your building. So, you know, when I look at social media and education in K-12, um, there has been an evolution of there used to be ed chat, the ed, and now there are, I would say, over a hundred chats. Uh, over the course of a week, easily. I mean, uh, there's EdChat, EdChat uh, twice a day, and then there's LA EdChat, which I think is going on right now, and there's, uh, I think there's an Iowa chat, there's definitely a Texas chat, um, yeah, there's Mich Ed, that's the Michigan chat that, that we have. Um, so that's awesome. It's evolving, it's growing, it's people. Uh, educators taking charge of their education. It's something that uh, I'm really excited to see because what happens when educators um, take charge of their professional development, I think only good things can happen uh, for students in the long run. I think that's really valuable. We've begun to see that transition in my district, finally. Um, it's, there's been a lot of times where in the past we've done lots of technology-type 
you know, almost mini conference type things, and everybody loves them. Like, they love that model. They love being able to go choose and find what they want. And so we've gotten to a point now in our district where we will do those same things, where there'll be several different sites all throughout the county on staff element days, and you can go pick and follow up on the topics that you want. And the teachers love those, and they constantly respond back how much they love them. And our district is taking note of that and beginning to implement that more and more and more. People want to take charge of what they want to know. Um, they've wanted to do that forever, but... You know, now that information is so prevalent and available everywhere, they don't need you to hand it to them anymore. So they're going to go out and find it themselves or, you know, set up situations where they can go and find the in-depth types of information they want that will help them out and help them become better educators and better teachers. Um, like you were saying earlier, we have these expectations um, of how we handle learning with students. Do we, are we differentiating what they're learning? Are we making it individualized? Are we focusing on, on the learner? Same thing should be happening with your staff. Is the district doing those same things? We have to be focusing on our learner, which is the teachers, individualize things for what they need, and so we're being most effective with the resources we have and um, helping the most teachers evolve to move forward and do great things. Wow. When Tim gets it, he just gets it just right, everyone. There's nothing you can really do to really add on to that. So uh, we're actually going to bring this... Um, uh, nerdy cast to a close. Uh, Tim, any final thoughts on uh, social media in uh, K-12 education? Um, just to echo a lot of the thoughts that um, Steven said in a session earlier today, if you're not doing it, you need to. Like, it's, the, you know, you've had enough time. We have sat, we've waited, we've asked nicely, we've offered Kyle's mom's cookies, um, but time's up. You need to get on the train. Like, it's time to get going. You need to move forward with us. Um, and we need to have those things go. I also need to just point out that Derek Brahman, that's Brahman or Brahman? He's, He's listening, he'll tell us. Yeah, um, he said that it seems like our microphone is ginormous. It is, it is ginormous. ginormous. So, yeah, it's it's a good one. Nick and I have cool microphones. So we what? do, I've got a matching one at home, so mm -hmm. enjoy that, everyone. Yeah, matching uh, mics. My final thought on social media in uh, K-12 uh, education is, is, is pretty simple, I guess. Um, it's here, and it's not going anywhere. You know, it's as simple as that. It's, it's a part of our culture in general. Mm -hmm. Social media is a part of our culture. And photo bomb Steven. Um, and it's important for teachers to stay relevant whether it's social media or what's going on at movie theaters or on television or music you know for me as an educator I feel like it's my job to stay relevant uh, and I want to have conversations and you know when that joke doesn't hit on all cylinders because mm -hmm. kids don't do that anymore it's yeah. incredibly embarrassing <laughs> so social media is another way to stay abreast of what is going on in the world around you and I think it's a crucial part of it and um, I really encourage teachers to uh, give it a try. Uh, you can reach out to me at the Nerdy Teacher uh, on Twitter to say, "Hey, tell me about this Twitter thing," uh, and I will show you all the wonders that is Twitter. And you can follow Kyle Pace or this guy behind me right here, who is over my shoulder, who's on Twitter and selfie. And I've always gone, but hey, you now can follow him. Look, we're oh, and now it's very I'm meta, it's very meta it's right here. Um, so I encourage people to get in social media. It's not going anywhere. It's really, really great um, to engage with your students in such a way. So, and I think we're preaching to the choir a bit right now yeah. as we talk about this on Google Hangout and over Twitter. But those of you that are listening, spread the word to your staff, yeah. the ones that aren't there listening. Show Obviously, they're not video. listening to us right now. But, but they will share be. it with them. Yeah, this will be archived. Definitely tweet yeah, that out. Yeah, it'll be on YouTube and share you can it. it out. So um, to wrap it up, I want to uh, thanks, uh, black, thanks to thank. Thanks. Thank singular. Uh, Blackboard Thanks. for uh, having us out. Yes, they have been. Do this. We'll be actually doing two more of these uh, tomorrow and Thursday, so stay tuned for those links. They'll be uh, uh, shared out there using the hashtag BBWorld14. And also, you can follow the hashtag BBWorldK12 Live. Yes. And that is the whole on, uh, online streaming portion of the conference. You can actually sign up for that at that website and Google it real quick, sign up, and all the content that's happening the next few days is free on that website to follow along with as well. You'll also be able to watch three exclusive 
videos uh, yes. written by uh, myself and Tim. And we are now writers and actors. We are actual, 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 actors. And, actors. Uh, Where's the camera? Yes. We <laughs> we were also joined by some amazing... <laughs> Steven, sorry. <laughs> the, yeah, by some amazing people as well. Steven's not in the video, but he's in this video. But the other videos, uh, he's not in. But the amazing Blackboard staff also have appearances yes. in the video, and they are fabulous. They are the cat's pajamas. Uh, I will agree with that. I will agree with them. They could make Grumpy Cat happy. They, I, I said that. There you go. That's how good they are. We were at a candy store today, and they had Grumpy Cat Cappuccinos, which were called Grumpuccinos. <laughs> so I enjoy. Think, I think that jumped the shark. It did. But, uh, but you can check those videos out. They're filled with um, tons of nerdy references for all the people out there if you want to go searching for those. So if you uh, sign up for uh, BB World Live... You can actually get to watch those, and they'll be posted on YouTube, and we'll definitely share those out. So, um, signing off from uh, hashtag BBWorld14. We will be back tomorrow to talk more things about what we're going on in this conference, give you some highlights, and we'll move on from there. So, say goodbye, Tim. Bye. Follow along on Twitter and online, and we look forward to talking to you. See uh, you, ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow. Take care.